I got five on the weed and fifty on the drink. I'm coming down, got my mind on bank. What the fuck they thinking about? T.A.T. think I don't capitalize on the motherfucking industry. Dying about my business. I ain't gonna quit it. What's up with them niggas with those promises they spit? Trying to put me down on the label, 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 payback. To the pack, I know that's a fable. Things have changed and the terms are loose. I can pay my dues. I'm singing the blues Cause niggas don't wanna put me in the store And every time I time I show I scream mo, 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 On the microphone I'm getting the What's up y'all This Slab OG's TV Back at it again Another interview Today I got a legend up in here uh, All the way from Austin To Houston His name ring bells You know what I'm saying Without further ado You know what I'm saying Introduce yourself to the camera What's up man I'm Gary man From Austin, Texas Conley Park 2-4 Representative You know Okay, okay. Man, can you kind of just, uh, you know, kind of explain to us, like, if, if if you even know, like, how the slab scene even got to Austin? Uh, I don't know how the slab scene got there. You know, a lot of a lot of people was, you know, had a connection with Houston and, you know, with DJ Screw and, you know, dealing with, you know, people like that back in the day. A lot mm -hmm. of legends. Uh, my uh, bro, Jake the Snake, he had a good connection with, uh, with Pokey and Big Mo and, you know, and all of them. And we used to always, you know, come to Houston and kick it with them. You know, I was a young nigga, like 13, 14 years old. So, mm -hmm. you know, nigga okay, I always okay. knew what was going on in H time. Yeah, being that you kind of one of the OGs in Austin, how many slabs out during, like, I say when you was young, if it was any out when you was, like, real, real young, you know, like <sighs> teenager, you know, early 20s? Man, there was so many cars out, man. I'm talking about a lot of people don't understand me. Austin had a lot of slabs back then, bro. I'm talking about not just a calm swangers, and I'm talking about, talking about candy out of Jack Ike, paint and spray. You had a uh, Lamont, Lamont Austin. Uh, Snuffy had a car too. You had uh, Lil Dennis. He had a uh, candy red nine eight on our five. Shit, you had Shannon, Lil Shannon Scott. Boy had the candy red roll master out of Ike. Uh, you had. Uh, so many people, man, that, that mm. was really coming down back then. You know what I'm saying? So was it kind of like a slab scene already, like in Austin, meaning like, hey, on the weekends, we over here with it, and it, in Austin, where this was slab, like, or was it kind of like y'all was going to Houston? When, nah, nobody when really, people, people, everybody wasn't really wasn't going to Houston, but, you know, it was just MLK, 6th Street, you know, the hangouts. Everybody would just, you know, crawl down the neighborhoods. You know, going through the neighborhoods, showing your cars off was, was the shit. Mm -hmm. Back then, you know what I'm saying? We had some we had some boys that was coming down, man. Boys out the, out the fold, man. You had Randall, man. Big Randall from Lakeside. Candy Red Park, 84 Park Avenue. I'm talking about clean, banging. Uh, Jake the Snake, that boy had a, a 71 Oldsmobile Delta, two-tone on the aisle five. Peanut Butter Guts. I mean, it was it was some cars out, man. It mm -hmm. was, you know what I'm saying? Can't forget my nigga Drew from Johnny Morris. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Had to, had to coop. You know what I'm saying? Bowling ball on our five. I mean, we had some we had some niggas out, man, that was doing their thing back then. Was man. this in the nineties? It was in the nineties, man. This was in the nineties. And actually shit, it was it was more cars than that. You know what I mean? If you just really think about it, I can't remember everybody off the top of my head, but it was a bunch of cars out yeah. there in the nineties, man. Yeah. Okay, okay. With like all the people that you just named, were they all riding red? No. Cause uh, I thought you sent me some pictures and it looked like it was way back in the day. Like yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, like I say, uh, most of them I did name. They was red. They was all red. But we had some. We had some blues out. You know what I'm saying? I think Bailey had a, the, the blue. Uh, the save. We had uh, Mexican Eric and Tyrone. Them boys had some blues. Had some cobalt blues back then. Uh, uh, Robbie Rob from Two Three had a two dollar save cobalt blue. Big Jamie from Two Three had a couple of cobalt blues. Uh, who else was blue back then? They sit on the blues. I mean, we had Crossside Key. He was he was red, Candy Red uh, Nine Eight. Uh, it was a bunch of cars. Tiger had the green, uh, the green STS. He was Candy. Uh, we had a bunch of cars, man. You know, you coming up in Austin. You know what I'm saying? Seeing all the slabs. When was your first set, and what, what did you put it on? Uh, my actual first set, I mean, I had a set back when I was younger, but <laughs> the set was, uh, two of them wasn't, wasn't right, they were clacking, and mm -hmm. the other two was, uh, wasn't as glass as the other two, so I ended yeah. up getting rid of them for the low. 
So I had to wait to get, you know, a, a good, good, decent set to put them on my drop. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? The 84 uh, Dow Baritz mm -hmm. convertible. So okay. I had to uh, had to wait, you know what I mean, to get a decent set. Cause like I said, back then, shit, you had to catch a nigga selling them or go to Mr. Davis and get taxed. You know, wasn't no tax and why I will back then, baby. Okay, okay. <laughs> Man, it, you just said something. You said clacking. It's a lot of people that watch this channel that, you know, they watch it just cause, you know, I don't know, maybe they're interested in it or right. they just, you know, uh, like the history of it. And they always ask questions that they might, we might not, we might know, but, right. you know, everybody else might not know. Can you explain what clacking is on the original wheel? What was clacking? And clacking when the spokes was, the spokes was just loose, man. The spokes mm -hmm. was loose and shit. Back then, you, the one person that we all knew they could fix it, that Mr. Davis. Mm -hmm. That was it, you know. So y'all I mean? was y'all was even back then going to Mr. Davis. Oh yeah, people was going to Mr. Davis, getting the clacking and getting them dip. A lot of a lot of wheels was not, you know, the chrome the finish on that would come off easy, you know what I mean? And just just didn't look good and shit. You had to go go to Mr. Davis or go to airline, dip in the chrome and they was they was dipping too. So mm. that was your only form of fashion of getting the wheels dipped and fixed. Mr. Okay. Davis was the only person we knew that shit I knew knew how to fix them. So Okay, okay. That's what we went to. So the first one that you actually got for, you know, glass six, what you put it on? I put them on the L dog, the drop candy red L dog. Okay. And can you kind of explain, you know, you told me off camera, but can you kind of explain where that L dog came from and, you know, who L dog it was? I mean, the L dog originally belonged to Corey Blunt, okay. OG Corey Blunt. Uh, I was at Ike getting my, my Lincoln spray. And uh, I, I, I seen that drop in the, in the back in the yard. He was taking me, you know, looking for some stuff. I said, damn, man, who are? I said, man, I want, I said, what's up with that, that drop, that dog right there? He said, oh, man, that belonged to somebody. And you know, blah, 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 blah. I said, man, I want, I want that car. Mm -hmm. He said, man, it's going to cost you. You want that car. A lot of people come through, he want that car. Nobody want to pay the money. I said, man, yeah. just tell me how much I want the car. Yeah. Shit, the man told me what the price was. Shit, I dropped it out to him. And shit, I got that car. Yeah, you know, I had to, I redone a lot of things on it, but yeah, I, I had to get it, man. Did it look like, like, did you even know that this was Corey Blood? No, Club? no, 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 not at all. I just, seen, you know, I just seen Candy Red Grill. It was missing a bunch of pieces on the side, so I had to, you know, uh, put put add a lot of things on it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean to get it going. The car, you can tell the car been sitting for years, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. So you say you went to Ike. Yeah. Was Ike like as expensive as everybody say he was even back then? Man, Ike always been hot, man. He just, Ike is, he's, he's expensive. Shit, mm -hmm. I think my first, I went to him, shit, over 20 some years ago. My first, when I took the Lincoln, I think he charged me $6,300 $6, for a paint job. Man, what year was this? This was in 2002. 2002. Yeah, okay, okay. He okay, me. so you just said 2002. That got me thinking about uh, this around the era of the capital. Yes, sir. Can you explain what it meant, you know, to pull your slab out and go to the cap? Man, it's crazy because when the, when I was at I I had ran into a uh, fish, pimping wheel, I think Dayron and I think Mexican Chris. They was all up there getting their car sprayed, and I was getting my car sprayed. And boy said, man. Where you from, bro? I say, sure, I'm from Austin. He said, man, we ain't no nigga from Austin was riding like this here. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, man, yeah, yeah. He was like, man, both of them cars yours? I said, yeah, man. He said, damn, okay. He said, man, we, we all trying to make it for the cap. I said, shit, me too. Mm -hmm. The cap was coming up about three, four weeks. You know what I'm saying? We was trying to get out, get our cars ready. Everybody, you know, fresh spray. But like I say, this was, man, this is a long time ago, man. Mm -hmm. it was, yeah. was it as? Cause you know, I'm young, so was it as wild as people say it was back man, then? That capital was full, man. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. You got capital stories that you that you can't tell on camera. Man, I got so many. I don't even know where to start. To be <laughs> honest with you, I, yeah. mean, I remember actually that year right there. Uh, I caught up with a uh, fish them at, uh, at the cap out to see why I was so lit, man. Them boys were driving so crazy, man. Moving the barricades out the way, going down the street backwards. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, man. It was that cap was a fool, man. If you wasn't there, if you ain't crossed that bridge by 12 o'clock, man. You might well get out the car and just start partying, man. That's, yeah. that's, that's how it was. It was that crucial. Yeah. All that cap was a lit, man. I ain't gonna lie. You think it could ever be like a cap like that again? I doubt it, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. That was I mean, just they, one they of the try things. to they try to throw you know like little beach parties up there, but and the only way you can get that cap involved, you got to get the universities involved. You got to get U of A's, TSU, Prairie View, 
you got to actually get those those people involved. HBCU, you got to get like those, those colleges involved, man. That's mm -hmm. the only way it's going to get back live like that, too. Yeah. Okay, okay. That Kappa, man, I remember one year when that big pimping came out. Uh, Pimp C and Bun, them, man, they performed it right there uh, outside on the beach, right there outside of Voodoo Daddies, man. It was, man, that was the time, man. I ain't yeah. gonna lie. So, boys, boys are probably, I can imagine, go the whole year putting their car together for the Kappa. Oh, yeah. That Kappa, man. You had Kappa and then you had the relays. It was always the relays the, the week before and then Kappa the week after. Okay, that was relays. Sir. That's in Austin. It's in Austin, Texas, yes, sir. How, how far back does that go? I mean, shit, 90, man. Relays go probably farther than that, but I remember just one particular relays, man. 1997 relays. It was at the old stadium, not the new stadium where everybody, this was at Memorial Stadium. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, coming out the relays after the, tra after the track meet, and I was, boy, I seen two candy red slabs coming down the boulevard, down the cave. Who them boys is, man? It was DeVille and STS. Nigga pulled up. They pulled up, stopped the car, popped the trunk, and just, man, just start walking, man. Left the trunk of the cars in the middle of the street with the hazard lights on. Yeah. It was Kiki and Fat Pat. No, Kiki and Fat Pat. Kiki and Big Hawk. Yeah. Man, boys, I'm talking about holding out that Ike Red on original foes, man. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about it was a beautiful scene. We talking about 97. Yeah. Oh, man, the boys was holding, man. Yeah. I can't lie, man. That that, that motivated me. I say, man, I got to I got to get that. Yeah. That's what that's what it was. Okay, okay, okay. And man, you I know you had a Lincoln back in the day too, but it wasn't on elbows. It was on Davins, right? No, I had it on Zab Judas first, and then I put the elbows on there. Okay, okay, okay. It seemed like back then, you know, the slab wasn't most so just the elbows. It was like yeah. different wheels that you would put, but it was you had to complete your car and then put whatever wheels yeah, yeah, you want you had, on. Yeah, 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 of course, of course, of course. Why it's kind of not necessarily like that no more? Well, you might have a dude putting all candy together on the car, you know what I'm saying? He might put some different type wheels on it. Yeah. Uh, that era is when, uh, you know, you had Dipset, you yeah. had Camera, you had 50 Cent, everybody came out with the spree wheel, you know, everybody came out with the spinning wheels. That was just worldwide. Everybody mm -hmm. was... Everybody wanted to be spinning. You know, them rims was, you know, the real one started at $10,000, bro. So I mean, they were they, damn near like the same amount as the elbow. No, nah, they were way more than the elbow back then. I ain't gonna okay. lie. Like, them rims was high. I think, I think when I bought them Zav Judas shit, I think I paid $6,800. Yeah. 6800 for a set. That's really like two sets of elbows. Yeah. Because, you know, you really, you can go to Mr. Davis and get, you You know, you can pay about 35 get you, a, you know, a good decent set. Mm -hmm. Or find them out the street. But, yeah, them. Okay. Back then, that was that was that was that was the way. But then Texan Wild Wheel came out. Yeah. When Texan Wild Wheel came out, that's what opened the doors to everybody getting the game, getting back fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because everybody the, back then, the, it was it wasn't accessible. Like buying those rims, you couldn't go anywhere and go get them, bro. Yeah. The rims was more valuable because if you had a set, man, you you had to be somebody. You had to know somebody. You, you couldn't you couldn't just go to the flea market or, or order them off the internet or catch them on Facebook, man. You had people searching for these rims all over the world, junkyards, everywhere, trying to find them wheels. Them wheels are valuable, man, for real. I, I know you were during that time, you was out during that time when it switched from yeah. know, the original to the Texan Wild Wheels. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. Can you explain what it was, like, y'all be out chilling somewhere, you know, whether it's at a club, or MLK or some Kappa Beach, and you see somebody come through and they might be on some 17-inch wheels, or they might be on some Gorillas. Did that trip the street side? No, I mean, cause you basically you basically saying like you talking about when right when Texan Wild Wheel came out? Like, cause I know from my understanding, like when they came out, not too many people even knew that it was another company out, yeah. you know, p producing some wheels. Yeah. So for somebody to see, you know, these twenty L wheels, and then they see some new wheels, and you know, they longer, they bigger, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I could imagine like the streets was a, like, a, damn, a, what is this? A, a lot of people was against them. Mm -hmm. A lot of people was against them. A lot of people, even, like there's a lot of niggas now to this day just riding them, and they had some bad to say, oh, them wheels, I'm keeping it original and all that. And then they had, you know, they had, they had to adapt. They had to get down with the wave, man. Mm -hmm. But it didn't trip me out. I mean, something new was, you know, it was much needed. We needed, you know, fresh set of glass in the box, not clacking, you ain't, you know what I mean? Like it was, shit, that was it. I mean, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Vaughn about the blueprint. I mean, shit, it, it took off. Who was the first ones in the streets with, like, 
you know, the gorillas or the 17 inch. Who was the first one? I've been trying to well, figure that gorilla, out. I don't see that's the thing. I don't know. I had a uh, I had hooked up with Tony P, and Tony P was selling them, and then, you know, I I, I had my hands on a few sets, so I was selling them too. Mm -hmm. You know, this is when Austin. they first, yeah, in Austin, okay. when they first came out, I was I was I was running through them sets like crazy. Yeah. When Texan Wild Wheel first came out, but uh, I can't remember back who the first was. You know what I'm saying? Who you know I you know like I said Tony, I mean I don't know I can't I don't know who the first one was I can't I can't lie to tell you. Yeah. That. First one was, but it was. Them sets, man, they, they start going around. And then yeah. once they got longer and longer, everybody had to get down with the program. Okay, okay. Yeah, and then, you know, we go, you know, further a little bit more. You know, a lot of people always know you from, you know, the beat battles and the beat contests that you would always win. Right. Can you tell them, you know, what car was it, you know, that won all them contests? Uh, DTS, 2007 Cadillac DTS. Mm -hmm. And Can it was at the Austin car shows? The, fir the first one, uh, the first car show was the Houston car show, I think okay. in 2018. Okay. A Wonder. Yeah. I Wonder, whatever it is, downtown. That was yeah. the first, that was the first, that was the first car show I officially won. Yeah. Okay, okay. And can you say what was in the trunk? I know some people, they don't like to tell what was in the trunk or nothing. Nah, you know, I have no problem. It was six uh, JL 13 and a halves mm -hmm. uh, on the three uh, Rafa Fosgate 2500s. That okay. was the setup. Okay, okay. And that was the, you won three times, right? Four. Four? Two in Houston and two in Austin. Can you say who you won against or do it uh, that, that first year, the first year, I think the first person I beat was uh, one of the dudes from the Austin Blue Line, uh, Jose. Mm -hmm. Beat Jose the first round. Second round, I went against uh, a dude named Sid from Beaumont. With oh, a Caprice, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then for the championship, I beat them boys out of Hearn at Roadmaster. That was for the championship. Yeah, okay, so we went okay. three rounds. Yeah. For that one. Okay. That okay. was a, that was the first year. Yeah. And was that the one that you sold to Tony P? Nah, nah, nah. That was the, the second. That one. was the second DTS. Uh, the first DTS I bought brand new, 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a I'm talking about brand new. I think the mother had like. Three, four thousand miles. I'm my brand spanking new. Oh, the one you was winning the contest, but that was the second. That one. was the second one. Okay. So the first one was the brand new one. I was the first one with the candy red one. It was Slim Thug had the blue one. I had the red one. This mm -hmm. was before, you know, them DTSs really, really hit the scene. This was, mm -hmm. this was, this was back then. I like to ask this too, cause that be, <clears throat> that be kind of the debate with like the OGs. You know what I'm saying? They be like, oh man, we don't like riding past bump, but it's still a Cadillac. You know what I'm saying? Right. This was, I guess, around the time when them Cadillacs was coming in, you know what I'm saying? Yep. People was putting them cars together. Yeah, so like I said, DTS, that that, that plastic bumper came out in 2006, I want to say. Mm -hmm. I think 06, yeah, but I got the one the next year, the 07 one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, that's yeah, it was it was, it was it was a sight to see back then, man, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. It wasn't no, I mean, I put that car together in 30 days, man. Yeah. Like 30 days, literally. I bought the car in the beginning of March. I was trying to get ready for the relays and the, mm -hmm. Uh, Cause I think Cap was already done, so it was just the relays. I think the relays was at the end of March, and I think I got the car the first week of March, bro. Mm -hmm. Got it painted. Uh, interior it was a brand new car, so I had to touch the interior. All I had to do was just put the inserts in there with the headrest, the uh, Cadillac symbols, the, the red seat belts, the suede headliner, carpet. You know what I mean? Just you yeah. know the works. Yeah. But okay, yeah, okay. got all this shit done in 30 days on that car. So I know you say you did that in 30 days. You think you could do that nowadays? Just the way, like how shops is like taking a long time or a little bit more pricier. You think people could? That's more like realistic for somebody to do that nowadays. Um. Yeah. No. Cause I done seen people. They even had all the money in the world, <laughs> but shit, they take it to a paint shop or something. They be sitting there two years. I mean, you, you know. I guess it's all about who you know. The reputation yeah. gotta be good because initially, when I got the car, when I seen Slim car, when I Slim was what motivated me to get that DTS. When I seen that blue and him coming down, I seen him coming down, and I was like, man, I got to, I got to, I got to hear up and give me one of them red. I gotta be the first one to come red with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, shit, I, I hear up and went and got that car, man. I hear up and went and found me the white one I'm looking for, the luxury three. Yeah. I couldn't wait, but I called Ike first. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's Ike, you know, he do all my spraying. 
Yeah. So I called Ike first and said, hey, man, I want to get, I'm trying to get this DTS spread. He said, man, I, I said, I, but I need it done within a few weeks. He was like, man, I don't think that's going to be possible right now. Yeah. He said, that car is real difficult. We had difficulty with Slim Car and this, that, and the bumpers with the sensors on the back and mm -hmm. all that got to be taken off. He was, I was like, so what, you, what are we talking about? He said, man, about two months. I said, that's too long. I'm trying to get ready for the relays. Yeah. And I called, I called Lionel. Lionel on the clock, man. That boy, so I said, man, Lionel, I need this car sprayed. Actually, Tony, he was, he, Lionel was like, man, I got some cars in front of him. He had Vince Young, uh, Vince Young had a, uh, that Lincoln. That Lincoln, that orange yeah. Lincoln with the top. JC and them had some cars up there. Yeah. There was a couple of more cars up there, you know, trying to get ready. They was already in the mix. I told Lionel, I said, man, just tell me what I need to pay, man. I want to, I need to get ready for the relays and pull this car out. Yeah. And boy, Lionel took the car. He, he stood up on his word. Hey man, boy had that car sprayed red in two, three weeks, man. I was ready to go, mm -hmm. ready to ride. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Okay, okay. So after the second one, did you put in any other car together? Uh, yeah, I had a, uh, uh, I had bought a. Uh, we said after the second one. After the second DTS. After the second DTS, nah, that was the them the only two that yeah. I had put like fully together besides the Lincoln drop. Yeah. Okay, okay. What made like? Would you put another car together? You say what? what you say what? Would you put another car together? Cause I know nah, last time man. I talked to you, you said, "Now nah, it's not really the same no more." Nah, man. I think I'm I'm pretty much retired with that, man. I'm it ain't nothing that make you want to say, "Let me just do one more." Man, I've been doing this shit for so long, man. It's like, nah, man. I don't think I, you know, I don't think that I do it, bro. Yeah. What you think is kind of like the difference between, like, when you first started? to not, you know what I'm saying, that make you say, nah, I'm I mean, cool it's, on it. It's, you know, it's a little more, a little more commercial. It's a little bit more, you know, driving crazy. It's just, you know, back then, you know, we, I ain't gonna lie, we rolled out, we drove crazy, you know what I'm saying? Cause we, I about to say, that era that you, that you was in, you know what I'm saying, that was kind of like the era that all that really started. It kind of started, but you didn't have that many people that was doing it. I mean, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You had fish pretty much started, man, yeah. just going crazy. You Billy know, Ray. And Billy Ray was driving crazy, then you had Tony P, and a nigga can drive too, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, but we you know we all line up and shit. We'll get on the freeway. We'll go 100 miles an hour. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Going crazy, 100 trunks up. I can. Show, I, I remember this Kappa man. This was the first, uh, first time that the uh, Austin and Houston ever like rode together in the line. Mm -hmm. I think this was Kappa 05 or 06. Uh, me and uh, my boys from uh, Austin. Uh, Northeast boys. It was me, my boy Frank with the wagon, uh, my boy Trey, boy Trey Martin with the uh, with the Cutlass with the 90 dot, and it was a uh, little Benny at the uh, two door from uh, the east side, and we all got together, man. We said, I said, man, we gonna go down this cap and fuck with these boys, man. We gonna come down and show these boys what we doing, how we doing it down here. Mm -hmm. So shit, we left Austin. We ain't, to my old, we ain't put them on no tow trucks. We ain't do no trailers. We put the gas in our shit. We rolled out. We drove from Austin all the way to motherfucking Galveston. Yeah. Met up with Tony P and, and the, the South Side Red Line. And shit, we, we left. We left. We left the uh, Kappa. Man, we soon we got on the freeway. My boys was behind me. Tony had the Red Line behind him. We in two lanes. We look at me. Tony look at me like this. I turned around, watched the road. I look back at it like this. He say, fuck it, let's go. So nigga, <laughs> the next thing you know, nigga, we took off. Nigga, what I'm talking about, bro, we were flying, bro. I'm talking about, it was about, a, man, I ain't gonna lie, no lie, bro. It was at least 86, at least 70 cars behind us, bro. I'm talking about not just, you know, oh, the red yeah. line was in the front. You yeah. know, the red line was in the front, but you had the, all the other colors and everybody else that was just on swangers that was behind, yeah. man. We took our trunks up. I'm talking about from Galveston all the way to Houston. We went, we, we, I mean, we, we did that all the way from Galveston all the way to Houston. I think we went to a club on Beach Nut, bro. We didn't, we didn't stop till we got to that damn gas station, bro. Damn. I'm talking about we going 100 niggas in the background, swinging, acting a fool. Oh, man, that was a, I wish it was internet back then, man. We could, yeah. we could, we could say that, but yeah, man, we had, a, we had a hell of a time that day, man. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. That was, and I think that was the last year Kappa was, that was it. I think that was the last little year that year. So right what there. year was that? Like oh. I think it was either oh five, oh five or oh six. It had to be oh six or something. Maybe oh six. Yeah. Maybe oh six. We gotta figure out a way to bring that capital back. Cause these stories that I be hearing, man, it made me want to say, damn, I wish I had the time. Man, we had so much fun back then with that capital, man. That capital was that capital was crazy, man. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. We 
there. It was a lot, a lot of shit, man. But uh, I remember there's one particular relays, man. It was snowing outside, man. It was snowing. It was like 18, 19 degrees uh, in Austin. It was, it was crazy. And then my nigga Tony P called me, said, "Man, we gonna come down there." I said, "Man." Y'all gonna come down here for what, nigga? I said, nigga, it's about 18, 19 degrees outside. It's snowing outside. He like, man, we coming. Ain't the relays in the springtime, though? Yeah, but for some reason this year, bro, I'm talking about Nick Paul Wall talking about swinging in the rain, nigga. It was snowing. Mm -hmm. Like, literally some shit. I was like, man, Tony people been bullshit, nigga. It's weather bad outside. Nigga ain't coming down here. That nigga's called me. That nigga say, man, we coming through Prairie View now. I said, these niggas for real. He said, man, I got about 12, 13 cars behind me right now. Red line. I said, damn. I said, all right, let me get up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got up, yeah, got my shit together. You know what I'm saying? Went and jumped, jumped in my car. It was, it was, the weather was too bad, so it wasn't no sense of, you know, cleaning, you know, getting, you know, all the way straight like that. Mm -hmm. Shit, when that boy Tony P called me, he said, I'm going to call you when I get to that McDonald's right there on 290, right there. Shit, boy called me. Shit, I pulled up, met him there. We hopped in the line, man. We went, first place we went, man, I think we went to 6th Street. We swang through 6th Street, man. I'm talking about it, man, snowing, coming down, man. Me, Tony P, Ray Ray, and the 300, when Ray Ray had the, uh, the 300, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, on the 17. Oh, man, we had a, we had a, we had a good time, man, swinging in the snow, man. Yeah. <laughs> For real, we swinging in the snow. I ain't gonna no lie, no yeah. true story. Yeah. We had a good time, man. I ain't gonna lie. Mm -hmm. That was that was that was that was a relay to remember, man. Cause it's like I said, it's always springtime. It's always hot, but this particular one, it was cold and it was snowing outside, man. Yeah, yeah, it okay. was it was good. Them boys, them boys, some real slab niggas, man. They came from Houston in the motherfucking snow just to come down, man. They were tripping in there. They were like, shit, fuck it. Man, them niggas came down there. was not playing, man. We popping, just snowing outside, man. We ride, popping trunk, breaking boys off, everything downtown, man. Acting a fool, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that was back in the day, man. But yeah, yeah that's, 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 why I, that's one of them things I wish we had internet, you know what I'm saying, back mm -hmm. then, because we recording that type of but shit. But it's probably, it's probably better that, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't internet, because y'all still got the memories of nostalgia. Oh, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, saying? yeah. For the, yeah, just for the memories, yeah, for the memories. You're right, you're right. But yeah, man, it was, we had some good times back then, man. It's just like I said, it ain't the same no more, man. It ain't the same, man. Yeah. So. What would you say to somebody, you know what I'm saying? At this slab out GTV, a lot of people this it's gonna this be the, these videos are gonna stay on here hundred years from now, you know, uh what would be your message to somebody watching, you know what I'm saying, to be like, man, what was Austin doing during this time, you know what I'm saying? What is Austin respect in it? What would you say to him? Well you say, Well man, oh, man, people don't like see what what it is was back then, a lot of people didn't like on them wheels, original wheels, I mean, everybody had at least one bad wheel. Like some, you know what I'm saying? The wheels or people feel like I couldn't get them balanced. Or when I go 55, my shit's shaking. Mm -hmm. So a lot, of, a lot of people didn't really want to, you know, take that risk of putting their cars on the highway coming down to Houston. Coming down to Houston. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But also, man, they had a, man, even like early, the early 2000s, I mean, it was, I mean, it was, it was 30, 40 cars out of Austin, man. I'm talking about complete cars. Yeah. I mean, you had you had motherfucking uh, you had Kurt and uh, Bushwick. Kurt had a, uh, the Deville back in 2000. Candy Red on all five foes. You had Bushwick out of Inez. He was Candy Red with the, the first debut of the Save, the 2000 the Save. I mean, it was so many. It was a lot of a lot of cars out, man. My boy Troll, shout out to my boy Troll. Had the Boss Hall out of Jack on all five original foes. She had four one. My boy 4-1, man, boy paid 10000 for a set of foes for Mr. Davis. Man paid 10 for five. Damn. On the Tudo, uh, what do you have? A, a Tudo, uh, <coughs> I think it was a Tudo like, little mm -hmm. coupe, Tudo, uh, the L Dog. Yeah. Hard top out of Jack. Uh, man, there was so many cars in Austin, man, at the time, man. I ain't gonna lie. It was, niggas, was, niggas was coming down back then, man, for real. It was a lot yeah. of, a lot of slabs, bro. We could have. If Austin could have, everybody could have all came together and, and man, it would, man, Houston would be, everybody would be shocked, bro. I mean, of, shit, I, I think it's kind of like that now, because, yeah, I mean, a, even when lot, we just had a the, lot of the cars contest back. a minute ago, like, uh, yeah. like a month ago, I mean, shit, Austin showed out, like, that's what a lot of people in Houston say. A lot of people in Houston always say, man, the boys in Austin, they really coming with it. You know yeah, what they saying? come with it. They come with it. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, you know, Houston is the home of it, so... You know, it's what it started, so it's, you know, 
it's the details. It's, it's the small little details on the car. Yeah, I remember you was telling me that. Yeah, that make it, you know what I mean? You can tell the difference between the cars, but, you know yeah. what I mean? Other than that, I mean, shit, it, you know, niggas putting their money together, niggas, you know, niggas, 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 niggas spending their bread on paint shit, you know what I mean, going places, but, you know, you gotta go to Houston if you wanna get your car all the way done right. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Man, if a youngster came up to you and was like, man, OG, give me some game about the slab. Like, give me some game. I want to come down one day. What would you tell him? Uh, I look at it like this. Slab is almost like dressing. Like, how you dress? I mean, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, you got you got to put that shit on. Mm -hmm. You got to put it together, but it's your thought on, mm -hmm. you know, how you want to do it. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's whatever you got to, you know, you got to put your back in it, man. You got to know, you know, you got to just do, you know. I feel like it's it's, it's 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 like I said. You gotta you know know what you're doing, but you gotta know who to go to too. You yeah. want you know what I mean the paint. You know what I mean because the first a lot of people don't understand your paint is important, bro. It's important on the slab. I mean you can do the interior. You can you can you can, your rims can be glass. All that can be done. But if your paint ain't hidden, it kind of because you understand when you see a slab coming down, the first thing you see is what the paint. The paint. Yeah. You got you gotta have that glow. And that's why I went always, you know, went to Ike on my cars, bro, because I know Ike gonna, Ike gonna, you gonna have that glow. Yeah, you right. So I done been in the red line and my car stand out over everybody, you know what I'm saying? Because I spent that 8,000 or whatever it was on that paint, you know what I mean? To make sure that the car is completely look good. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's what it was right there, boy, I ain't gonna lie. Man, what's your top five greatest slabs of all time, man? Your opinion. Top five? Yeah. Ooh, I forgot about this one right here. Man, it was a boy, dude from Austin, from the east side, a nigga named Duffy, man. He was the first one I seen. I think him and Fish uh, from Houston to Austin, they, when they, that Cadillac DTS came out, the 2000 model, man, that boy had a candy red DTS out of Ike on five original folds, custom trunk, everything. Man, that, that got to be my favorite, man. I ain't going to lie. That, when I seen that boy coming down, I said, woo wee, boy, he was fucking them up, boy. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, him. I gotta, I gotta give him and that drop, that that green, that candy green drop, Buck had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that was a bad. That was, that was a, that was a beautiful mother. What was that? Sure. A saber? Oh, I can't remember if it was a saber or I think it was a saber. But that okay. man, that motherfucker was nice. But Julio did his thing on that one, man. Yeah. Um, who else can I say that was coming down, man? Uh man, Philippe Wood, man, I liked that that motherfucker Darren had the one the ice spray with the red pieces sprayed at the mm -hmm. bottom. Oh, that bitch was nice. That boy had some knock in that motherfucker too. Um, who else I can say that was coming? Man, it was it's so many, man. I ain't gonna lie, I like the fish DTS too, man. Fish fourth ward on fire. Oh, yeah, that that boy that boy was nice, man. I gotta give it to him. He had that motherfucker right. That bitch was so wet. Yeah, I gotta give it to Fish on that one too. One more. One more. One more. I don't know. We gotta get my L dog number five. I gotta get my L dog in there, yeah. man. That motherfucker was that motherfucker was right, man. I ain't gonna lie. For way back then, uh, when I got the car, uh, I did I did a lot of work to it, man. And when Ike resprayed that motherfucker and put that California red to match that Lincoln, boy, that motherfucker was nice. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta get that number five, man. Yeah. All the time, for sure. Yeah. Man, hopefully one day, you know what I'm saying, you can say, ah, let me get you, let me try to, you know, come and do it one more time. But, you know, if not, that's cool, you know what I'm saying. Man, you got any shout outs to get up out of here? Yeah, man, shout out to them uh, Northeast Red Line, man. You know, we really was holding it down back in the day, man. We really was first niggas to get on that highway and make their trip and take their chance on whatever happened. We, we, wasn't, we wasn't scared, we was dying with it. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to my boy, uh, Tony P. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to OG, OG Pee Wee. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to, uh, shout out to Chris Thomas. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, that's 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 pretty much it right there, my boy. I really, I really, man. Slab. Oh yeah, OG. I got a shout out. Yeah. I got a shout out Unlimited Customs, man, for uh, helping me get that that lack, man, to win all them competitions to be, you know, on top. Oh, that's, that's who did it. Yeah, okay, Jimmy okay. Unlimited Customs, man. I got a shout him out, man. He, you know, he made sure the car was right. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Almost every beat contest. Yeah. I really, man. Slab OG TV. Got Gary Velvet up in here. OG from Austin all the way to Houston, man. We out.